This is Trading Simplified, and I am a trading enthusiast who likes to simplify trading. And to get started, just a reminder, I am not a financial advisor. This video is for entertainment purposes only, just to document my own journey, and you should always do your own research. All right, so welcome back, everybody. I just wanted to go over my strategies when I am buying the dip and just talk about how I like to look at these red minute candles and make a decision whether it is the right time to make an entry or not. So I bring up this chart. It is 9.12 a.m. right before the bell opens, and I just wanted to illustrate RSI and the main tra tra trading strategy that I like to use. Now, just to show you RSI, I have previous videos that explain them, but just give a quick short snaps on it. I'm going to show you how to add it. So I use the Fidelity Active Trader Pro app, and I go under Indicators. And under Indicators, I have Relative Strength Index, and then I add that. And then what that is, is this blue box right here showing RSI. And Zoom right now had earnings the other day, and they did pretty well, but their guidance was off, so I, it's been selling off. But as you see, I like to focus on the RSI of a one-minute and a five-minute chart. So right here is the one-minute. And what I want you to focus on is this number right here, RSI. And you can also see it right here circled at the 55.38. So on this RSI of a one-minute I like to buy less than 30 means oversold and if it was 70, 80 or 90 that would mean it's overbought and there's a higher likelihood of pullback. But I like to compare the one minute and the five minute at the open for a quick day trade. Notice on the one minute chart we have 54.77, now 53.57 and when I switch it to a five minute chart of RSI, notice that it's 29.2 now. It's changing actively because this is live. And I like to use this as an indicator to when am I going to enter the position. And I'm going to bring up a list soon of showing my strategies, but I like to compare the one minute and the five minute to make a decision whether it's time to get a starting position as a reversal play. So here are my tips for buying the dip. So just previously how we had on the chart, I like to look for an RSI of one minute chart and the five minute chart and I like to purchase when the RSI is less than 30 on the five minute chart and I like to have the RSI on the one minute chart at least less than 18 to 20. Number two I like to look for five or more red candles and I'm going to show you a quick picture to illustrate that. So you can see here that there are multiple five minute red candles that are coming down. And that's when I would look to be making my purchase around like 296, 297. So number three, I like to look for a news catalyst, preferably no news when I'm buying dips. If there is bad news, I try to stay away from the stock unless it's completely oversold with five or ten five-minute red candles to expect the pullback. Um, I also like to look for volume to make sure if the volume is very low that day, I try to just stay away from the stock because if there's no volume, you're not going to get that pop. You need high volume when going to make these quick reversal trades. The last thing that I wanted to discuss is when to cut losses on your reversal trade because you can't just hold every trade because otherwise sometimes the trade will go south and then you take bigger losses than you wanted to. So I always like to keep good examples to see you know, what works for people. If I'm buying 100 shares of something and it drops 20 cents, I'm going to lose $20 because every 10 cents is going to be $10. So you have to depend on how many shares you are willing to do and what risk you are willing to tolerate. When you buy the dip, I like the 10% rule, 5 to 10% of the amount that you are willing to feel comfortable if this trade goes south. I like to cut losses at 20 cents. So for people that have more money, if you're going to buy 500 shares, just keep in mind that every... 20 cents it drops is going to be a hundred dollar difference in your actual cost basis. No, rule number two is I only purchase the dip with an amount that I can tolerate because it is difficult timing the dip. Even if the RSI is very low, it can still oversell. So you just have to be careful and always protect your, your overall cash balance. So just an extra tip on rule number three. After earnings and it's oversold, like Zoom, for example, I try to stay away from buying dips if the earnings, if they're not doing well, if the company's not making money, if they don't have revenue, if they don't have guidance, I just stay away from the stock because I just have a feeling that it's going to keep going down because there's not many positive 
things that happen on that earnings to make it come back up. I like Zoom, for example, because it has it beat earnings per share this this quarter. It has great revenue. It's just the guidance was not reached from I guess Wall Street, so it's been you know going down more. The fourth tip I have is when you purchase, you want to have an entry in mind when you're going to actually buy and sell out. You don't. You want to know what's your stop loss. Where are you going to sell this? What gain are you trying to make? So if you bought 100 shares and your goal is, goal is to make $30, you're trying to make $0.30 cents on the stock. But you always have to follow a stop loss because it can just keep going south. Just because you buy the dip doesn't mean it's always going to come back up. So it's just something to always keep in mind. Just always protect your assets. And if the trade goes wrong, accept it, take the loss, and then try again. You can always buy again lower if it dips another point or two. But you can't do anything if you just hold on to it and it drops one or two points. So this wraps up this episode of Trading Simplified. I hope you learned something. If you learned anything, please hit that like and subscribe to the channel. I'm just trying to give other ideas. I'm not a professional investor, but I just like to share what I've learned and what's been working for me. So if you have any extra tips, just leave in the comment section below.